What's cracking, everybody? Don't worry, the music's almost over. <laughs> Actually, I'll probably uh, go ahead and get this turned off here. So people won't be like, oh my god, what is this nonsense? But I gotta hear my favorite part. Alright. Well, what are we gonna be talking about today? And why do I got this pretty boy up on the screen? Well, I'm gonna tell you. First off, my name is John. I am with FMP Wargamers, and this is our weekly show at 8 p.m. now on Twitch. So if you're new to this show, or you've been uh, lurking about, make sure you hit the follow button above. You can turn off notifications if you want, but just make sure you hit that follow button, because we are getting very, very close to our affiliate level, to where we can uh, start doing this mass broadcast with multiple cameras with uh, every member of the FMP team who are right now taking essentially a sabbatical, we'll call it a sabbatical, um, school, wife and kids, uh, jobs in the, coming up, uh, like Jonathan was going to be doing a show tonight, uh, however, a uh, new project popped up and he is going to be busting his butt all night tonight so or working late so let's get that music turned off I was jamming out here as I usually do uh, before I do a show anyways Jonathan's working late on a project so last minute I jumped on so you'll have to deal with this beautiful face all night so make sure if you're just jumping on hit the follow button hey look who it is it's mr. a dinner you know what's interesting Mr. Denner is that several of my little pop-up windows have disappeared so I cannot see who is in chat unless I pull up another window that's probably why you're seeing my cursor move around but I'm not actually <laughs> moving anything so let's just kind of tuck this away over here so I can see the chat I'm not sure what's happened there um, but I'm not going to mess with it because that will probably screw something up. Uh, are you hearing me just fine right now, Mr. Dinner? Hopefully so. All right. So we have awesome. Is, do you think the sound quality is any better? Because I've got this uh, brand new microphone to record my dulcet tones. I'm not even sure if that's the correct terminology, but hopefully the volume's a little bit better. If not, I think I need to probably have the microphone a little bit, maybe overhead, or I need to work with the directional settings. Anyways, it's in an effort. Um, <laughs> let my, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, so I don't get too uh, drawn out, and I know some people have bedtimes. Um, you know, it's you get old and you go to bed a lot earlier. Um, maybe you're praying for death, <laughs> really, really dying your sleep earlier. Maybe you just got to get up and take care of your amazing kids and drive an hour to work every day. Whatever. Um, me, I get to work. I get to sleep in and go to work at noon for now. We'll see if any of these new upcoming jobs uh, that I've uh, put my resume into. It will or at least one will pan out all right so I'm rambling we got some stuff to cover the show tonight's about news rumors maybe leaks and the Espirit decor uh, GT that's coming up and actually I'm gonna start on that one give a chance for more people to jump in if you're just now following or just jumping on make sure you hit the follow button um, we need to have like a minimum of three people watching live shows at a time and for like pretty much like 700 minutes a month so we appreciate it if you even have it on the back in the background and you're doing other stuff and you're not even listening it, it still helps us uh, that way we can get to a sponsor uh, level monetization etc etc all right so tonight uh, i'm going to be covering a lot of information mainly news a dash of rumors and possibly leaks. I'm waiting for a message to pop up. Hopefully in the next 
25 minutes. They said that they would be dropping that information by about 8.30. So we'll, we'll cross our fingers and I'll get a little little blip. Maybe even they might even pop up on the show and type it out there, show some pictures. We'll see. So let's talk about um, the Esprit Decor. Uh, that GT is coming up in October, the 19th and 20th. It's the week before SoCal Open. Uh, SoCal opens in California. This here is going to be in Cypress, Texas. It's only a 28-man GT. What makes this special? Well, I'm running it. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. The uh, the main draw for this event is the championship ticket or the championship uh, prize is a LVO or Las Vegas Open Warhammer 40,000 championship ticket and a 3D three day pass. Those that's going to go to the uh, best overall. So that means best painted uh, combined with best overall score. So. That's something that people need to take into consideration. Uh, uh, if you tie with somebody for first and that that opponent has a better painted army, well, they're gonna win. So either don't tie or have the best overall score. Now we're doing things a little different. It's gonna be a 1,750 point tournament not the 2000 points this will still be an itc event so you will get your itc points but we are going to be scoring this differently because uh, we're going to be including soft scores for the overall so you might you could conceivably um go five and oh and but because of your paint score you might not win it it's a possibility is it likely no but it's a possibility and on top of that, we're not using ITC championship missions, which has kind of gotten stagnant. Uh, those those missions are, everybody knows how to game the missions. They know the in and outs. They know how to thread a 2,000 point army through the, the missions, maximum efficiency. So we're disrupting that. We're disrupting it because we want this event uh, to be really hard and difficult and change the mindset of top players or anybody that's even wanting an opportunity to get that ticket. It's essentially $120 value for that LVO package. Now you have to take, they have to take care of, they're getting there. They have to take care of uh, food and um, room and board, all that jazz. But we're just providing them with a the ticket to go. Now, uh, we're making it difficult because of that reason. So the, the missions are not even going to be released until October 1st. It's 1,750 points and painting is going to be part of that scoring. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a challenge and I've already we've already gotten a little bit of pushback on that because of the 1750 point or because of the painting requirements well you know what you don't have to attend gents I would love for you to attend and it's very exciting to have a lot of top players attend however we have to set a certain standard and level of difficulty beyond just your opponents so it's going to be five games over two days and uh, we're going to make it difficult for everybody. It's going to be even Steven across the board. Terrain is going to be even. And everybody's going to have the same terrain, a level of terrain, and the same missions. So it's going to come down to your ability to play, your list building, your painting, and... Uh, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to also your dice rolls. So it's like pretty much 50% of it you have control over. The other 50%, the dice, which might be actually a bit more than 50%, you don't have any control over. Sorry. Um, but that's the nature of the game. Am I right? Oh, excuse me. All right. So that's what's coming up. It's a two-day event. It's only $30 for the event, and every dollar is going back into prize support. Every dollar. And we're going to have extra trophies. We're going to do our absolute best not to make this a normal, um, since it's being held at the Atomic Hobby Shop in Cypress, Texas, instead of going, hey, here's some gift cards to buy stuff, we're going to set, um, get set uh price support to give out and there still might be some gift cards but ideally we want everybody to be able to walk away with something uh unique all right 
So enough about that amazing GT that's going to be at the Atomic Hobby Shop in Cypress, Texas on October 19th and 20th. Uh, it's not set up in BCP app, but you can at least call the store and prepay for a ticket. And get your name on the roster. Uh, I think we are at nine or ten bodies right now, so we're coming up on halfway. So take that into consideration. All right, so let's get on to a couple other things. Now, you guys have probably already seen, and I wanted to do this show uh, yesterday. Um, I just got a massive email dump of tons of pictures of stuff that's coming up um, with the Dark Angels and next month's White Dwarf, which I'm sorry, Dark Angel players. Um, yeah. Okay, look, if you're a narrative player and a hobbyist, that sort of thing, uh, or even you just like the lore, dude, you are going to be one happy camper. But if you are if you were kind of like waiting for this to be the the big um, thing, the big release that's going to all of a sudden change the meta and Dark Angels are going to be on top finally after all these years, maybe even squash some of those jokes of them being um, nothing but traitors. Uh, uh, well, sorry, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be very disappointed. Now, that's not to say that Dark Angels in the future uh, might not get a nice upgrade. Because in a way, they they just did get an upgrade. I'm going to see if I can pull this up here um, before I start talking about this handsome young man. So, uh, if you were... Let's go to the Warhammer community page. Unless you've been under a rock, uh, FAQ dropped. And... At first, it was only the, the FAQ for Space Marines, White Scars, and Ultramarines. And then they turned around and dropped this uh, other publications one. So this is what has popped up. Uh, if you are a Dark Angels player, let's see here. Dark Angels, Blood Angels, Space Wolves, and Death Watch. You got, all, you got a bunch of changes. So like the Auto Bolt, bolt Rifle Change, Mastercrafted, Stalker. Well, all these weapons, I'm not going to read them off. Um, holy crap, I did not know this. Captain and Gravis Armor changed to a seven wound model. Holy crap. Uh, I was not aware of that. That is cool information. I need to find, I need to look into that I and see if they went up in points. I don't think they did. Uh, that, that's actually kind of a cool thing. That's actually a really cool thing. Holy crap. That might be, oof. I'm about to think about this. Interesting. Anyways, um, so they're saying you get all this stuff. Uh, aggressor squads, uh, pretty much all the changes in the Space Marine Codex to all the Primaris units has migrated over to your books. So I'm going to highly suggest you go over, find the uh, other Space Marine chapters, FAQ, and take a look at everything that changed for you. If, if anything, um, that this includes all the vehicles. They even did everything uh, for the forces of the Adeptus Astartes from the Forge World book. Pretty much all the changes, including uh, Angels of Death abilities. And there's another document um, that was released, uh, pri I would say about two weeks prior to um, this release, this, this little bit. And it showed which units that, and I guess it's not on this document, which units that the, um, oh my gosh, I can't even think of the name, the Dark Angels <laughs> uh, are going to be getting out of this. I'm going to see if I can go back to it. And so basically, it's all essentially all the new units. Um, and that document that you just saw a little bit ago kind of covered up, covered how, uh, or you know what, what am I doing? This is silly. Um, that document covers what FAQ stuff you're getting from everything. Um, let's see here. Forge World, blah, 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 blah. None of that stuff. FAQs. Anyways, if you have not been paying attention, you, as a Dark Angel player, just got a whole bunch of other units. And I'm trying to uh, find it for you. Ah, here we go. The August update. This errata. Um, if you're not aware of this, here's what you get for Dark Angels. All the new Phobos Armor characters, 
um, pretty much everything out of the the spear or the shadow spear box. As you can see, all this right here: um, the impulsor, the incursors, infiltrators, invictor, the repulsor executioner, suppressor squads, and it tells you how to replace all the words like captain with master, all that kind of stuff. Um, chapter tactics, what what applies for successor chapters, all that jazz. And this also applies to any of you that are talking about that, that play Blood Angels, Space Wolves, or Death Watch. And it shows what everybody in your codex is going to be getting, minus servitors and beasts. If you have beasts, which would be uh, Space Wolves get uh, the Fenrisian Wolves and Cyber Wolves. So these rules would not apply to them, but all your other Marines this would apply. So if you're not if you're not aware of this, make sure you go and just download this, or at least take a look at it. I would say download it, print it off, put it inside of the um, uh, the codex, so you have it. I don't know why this keeps resetting. And then come up and take care of the other publications. That way you have all the errata that apply specifically to your codex. If you're Blood Angels, Dark Angels, Space Wolves, and or Death Watch. Um, so speaking of this, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and keep talking about Dark Angels. Um, so <laughs> this right here, this image that uh, I'm pulling up right now, is a gentleman called Lionel Johnson. <laughs> so when I was looking for pictures of Lionel Johnson for this episode, because I want to talk about Dark Angels a little bit, I just like, okay, quickly, let's do, uh, let's find some pictures of Lionel Johnson. I typed it in, forgot the apostrophe, and I bring up this uh, poet <laughs> from the 1890s named Lionel Johnson. This is not the Primarch, and I doubt this gentleman is a knight, though he does have immaculate hair. Look at that hair. Amazing. I mean, that is some great hair. However, this is not Lionel Johnson, the Primarch of the Dark Angels. This is a um, <laughs> poet. So let me back out of here. I'm trying to find some good pictures without going to other people's websites. Um, unfortunately, I don't even know why Fabio is in there. Uh, it's very difficult to find some pictures. I should have had these loaded up. Looks like Bell of Lost Souls have a picture, but I don't want to have to get... Uh, yeah, so Lionel Johnson, the man himself, or the man creature thing so anyways reason why i'm talking about him is because dark angels are right around the corner in the white dwarf and so i don't drool on about this let's talk about exactly what's gonna what you're getting uh the first thing is it is this is mainly just an update concerning dark angels and the whole drama of primaris marines um they don't like them they don't because they, they can't trust them because of their whole inner circle thing. So uh, if you're not aware, uh, Dark Angels during the Horus Heresy 10,000 years ago, uh, pretty much half of the chat, the Legion broke off. And I, I don't remember if they were rebelling against or they were siding with Horus or they were just tired of Lionel Johnson. Maybe they might have been pissy that they were left behind. It might not even been half. I think it was maybe a third, you know, like a third of heaven. Um, at any rate, uh, they basically kind of rebellion. Some bad stuff happened and dark angels have kept it secret for 10,000 years. Instead of being adults about it and say, look, um, here is a roster of about, I don't know, about 3,000 uh, Marines. Uh, so if you see these guys, they're traitors. They betrayed us. And we need to, you know, go ahead and kill them or capture them or whatever. And, and instead of telling, you know, the authorities, telling your brothers, hey, some of my kids, um, they're a bunch of assholes, excuse my language. And they, uh, they pretty much turned heel and they're bad guys now. So we need to kill them or capture them as we find them. Because if you look over at White Scars, they ran into the same problem. But the White Scars are like, hey, we're not going to keep this secret. We had some bad seeds. We dealt with it. Just like uh, Death Guard and um, the Sons of Horus had bad guys. Well, their bad guys were actually good guys because they were still loyal. But they were traitors to um, their, their legion. So they're kind of bad guys to the bad guys. Yeah, I'm not even going to try to figure out the semantics of that. But 
and now everybody knew about, hey, we had some people betray us um, that turned heel, turned traitor, and they're being punished, or we captured them, or we're going to capture them. But the dark angels are like, we better not let anybody know for some reason. So for 10,000 years, they've kept it secret, which I seriously doubt they kept it secret. Really sorry. I'm always dehydrated when I'm talking to you guys. Maybe it's just because I'm talking so much. Um, so why, or I don't think they've kept it too well secret. I think the Inquisition has an idea. Robo Gilliman, he's back. And for about 200 years, I'm pretty sure old boy knows that the Dark Angels have dropped the ball, especially after the whole Vigilist thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that he knows what's going on. But hey, whatever. He's not calling him out on it because he's not worried about the loyalist Dark Angels. He's worried about the traitor part just because they've allied with Chaos or they're renegades. They're not even like Black Shields. I mean, they are just like renegades. So where was I going with all this? Uh, don't keep secrets. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, so that's what this whole White Dwarf is going to be about um, is them bringing in uh, the reluctancy to bring in uh, the Primaris Marines into the into the chapter, uh, which I understand, if, especially if you're trying to be all super secret squirrel and you don't want, you don't know if you could trust these guys because you didn't recruit them. They are, they've been in stasis for 10,000 years or whatever. I get it. But eventually they relented. Now, there's a short story that's involved in this White Dwarf very short more I don't even know if it's a short story yeah probably um, they also cover a number of Dark Angels characters that are being updated um, now not updated as necessarily as miniatures but they just have some lore updates or they're brand new characters there's about four or five of them one um, well two stood out one was Balthazar I believe he was the company master for which is like their version of a captain for the third or fifth um, company of the um, of the Dark Angels, Balthazar. The about two or three box sets ago, so I guess that would be sixth and seventh edition core book, and I cannot remember it. I don't know, Denner, if you remember it, or if anybody that's on right now remembers. Um, it's not the Dark Imperium box; it was the one right before that 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 main box set with the rules. Um, it was Dark Angels versus the, um, well, now, I'm not sure what they're called now, but they were the Loyalist Renegades, or the Loyalist chapter, the Crimson Sabres, and then they turned traitor and mutated and all that stuff. So jump on, let me know what it is. I totally forget. I know it's not Dark Imperium because that's the current set. Um, it, it, the, the, the name of it is just, uh, man, it's going to drive me crazy. So please, somebody jump on. Tell me what that previous set was. Now, uh, so Balthazar looks like, if I understood the email that I received, has died. And there is a new company master that's taken over, and he is going to be a Primaris Marine. There is another Primaris Marine that is, um, I guess he's going to be inducted as a master. It just said um, Primaris Marine inducted to the Crow Wing. So we know that there's an, um, I, pretty much I think the, each of the companies are broken up into wings. We are aware of, I think, three companies that are like that. So the Death Wing, which is the first company, and the Raven Wing, which is the second company. Um, they got all their little secrets. I don't know what the Crow Wing is. Um, I, for some reason, I feel like that, that information was it said the seventh wing. I don't want to pull up the email and everything because I don't want you guys to see um, who that email was because I don't want to get them in trouble. Anyways, so um, there's about four or five characters in there. Are these going to be characters for the uh, when the Dark Angels book drops? I don't know, guys. They already have a lieutenant model. So will they get a new model? They might. And will it be somebody that's brand new? Or is it going to be a named, uh, you know, an older named character? Like, uh, let's see, we've got Ezekiel. We've got um, Azrael. We have... Uh, who's the master of the second uh, of the Raven Wing? Um, oh man, 
Uh, Belial is the first co company master. I'm not sure. I can't remember who the se uh, the second one was or the Raven Wing was. He's a dude that run that either he's on a on that jet bike with the plasma gun and the storm bolters or whatever on there, or the combi bolters whatever. Or he can well, at least in previous edition, or he could be in his souped up land speeder. I don't remember. Um, what his name was and it's escaping me it's some angelic sounding name anyways uh, it could be any one of those characters or it could be a brand new one I suspect it's going to be one of the old characters um, but we'll see uh, now and we also know that in this white dwarf that they actually promoted a Primaris Marine to the rank of Deathwing now one of the things that they this this short these uh, this little article in here talks about is that uh, the Dark Angels before they allow they promote any of the Gray Shields, which are the Primaris Marines that have been in stasis for like ten thousand years and are getting added to the their the chapter uh, before they allow them into any of the higher ranks into any of the secret orders. Um, they're taking any of the wounded ones from like say the Death Wing or the Raven Wing. And they're taking those wounded ones and saying, you know what, go ahead and make them, um, get, he, patch them up, heal them up, turn them into uh, Primaris Marines so we can start getting our own guys into these ranks until we can figure out if we trust these guys, these new guys. So who knows uh, who's going to be the next character. And uh, sure, as, sure as crap. Uh, Oh, you know what? I, let me before I go any further. Let me show you what pictures I put this into a Google Doc so you guys could see what the images was without me pulling it up. Um, they have already popped up all over the place, but uh, since uh, just in case you haven't seen it, I'm going to go ahead and show you what you're getting. Uh, well, first off, uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. So there's your typical painting articles. Um, let me see if I could blow this up. Yeah, that's about as big as I'm going to get, ladies and gents. Yeah. All right. So uh, you can see right here, there's going to be painting articles. That's very typical. Um, even some conversion article, um, and a conversion article, like it looks like because of that blue plastic over here and that this first image, that looks like that's the um, easy to build Redemptor Dreadnought and how you could easily go in tinker with it, add on some iconography, and turn it into a, and how to paint, get that, that level of paint job, um, and turn it into a Dark Angel's Redemptor Dreadnought. Uh, further on down, we're going to see pretty much Primaris Marines everywhere um, get turned into Dark Angels, and it, that's pretty much what this is about. Uh, it's just showing off that, hey, your, your Dark Angels can be Primaris too. Here, we're blending in the story. We're not retconning. We are just adding to the story as the whole Indominus Crusade continues to go on. How are the old school chapters, the first founding ones like the Dark Angels and Blood Angels, Space Wolves, dealing with uh, the, this new influx of a new marine type and um, that they did not recruit themselves? So anyways, more imagery, and that's all this is. There's no new models. There's no new uh, kits, no new characters. All it is is just showing off this gentleman's kit bash of his Dark Angels army. And the paint job's okay. I'm not too keen on this green, the way he did it. Um, but it just, I don't know. To me, it looks like either Michael Bay or somebody else. There's too many light. It looks like with all the highlights, um, and that bright points that it was like le uh, lens flares everywhere, especially on these dreadnoughts. I'm not saying that the paint jobs are bad. It's just I'm not a particularly big fan of it. So no new models. Sorry, guys and gals. Now you're seeing this going, oh, my gosh, new rules, stratagems. This is going to be amazing. Hold the phone. Hold on, gents. Let me take a sip here and ruin your day. All right, these stratagems, yes, they are new, but these stratagems, if you're familiar with White Dwarf and even some of the uh, books that have been published showing off specific scenarios 
and you'll see the red and usually red and green or red and blue, whatever, uh, stratagems. So one is for the defender, one is for the attacker. These do not apply to mash play as far as we know in this rules. In this mission that is in this book, I think it's called the hunt, the players can use command points to use the following bonus stratagems. These stratagems are for this mission, not for match play, not for anything else. Unless, you know, okay, let's just concentrate on match play or other narrative play, unless you are including this or you and your opponents, your campaign group or whatever, like, yeah, go ahead. You need all the help you can get because you're playing Dark Angels. And currently right now, they're not the strongest meta-wise. Uh, so I'm not going to go through this. You guys can probably maybe see these or, or read these or you've seen them online already. And I, dang it, I almost had the name of the, um, goodness, what's it called? Name of that uh, 6th and 7th edition set. Ah, it's going to drive me crazy. Oh, well. So, these are the stratagems. There's nothing new. Well, they're new, but they're not for match play. I'm sorry, guys and gals. You're not going to be able to use these for your match play, especially if you're looking at tournament scene. Um, and here's the mission, Crucible of War, The Hunt. I, and I got to say thank you to the gent that uh, sent these pictures to me. This was not Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, it's just a friend that sent me these pictures. And after doing a little bit of research, I found out that these are the same pictures that have been popping up um, since, uh, well, pretty much all day today. Uh, Spiky Bits, Bell of Lost Souls. It's like, I don't know if it's the same person sent it out to everybody or, you know, that, that well, I know my friend, he sends it out to other people as well. So I don't know. So it, it's a special scenario. Uh, nothing for match play. Unless you're able to somehow glean some information out of there to create some um, some mash play rules, but it basically it's a it's a mission about Cipher and hunting him down and his fallen angels, blah blah blah. So it might be fun to play, especially if you like the fun scenarios and you don't want to sit there and constantly do match play games. You're ready to shake things up. Then this would be a lot of fun. And you could probably even change some things around. Forget about making it Cypher. Make it a different character. And just, you know, say, you know, this guy counts as Cypher. It doesn't matter. Just have some fun with these rules. You know, and if if um, you're not using Dark Angels, but and you but you want to play this, change up, you know, Death Company. Change up Dark Angel, uh, the keyword, and put Ultramarines or White Scars. Have some fun with it. Uh, you don't have to dismiss it as garbage. But if you're looking, guys and gals, if you were thinking, and I know it was all over Reddit, uh, it was all over a lot of the news and rumor sites and the leak sites, speculation sites, uh, even YouTubers, that, oh man, we're finally getting something awesome for our Primaris Dark Angels. This is going to be amazing. This is the chance that we're going to get to elevate ourselves to uh, being uh, awesome in the meta, uh, and by meta, I mean um, competitively, like in match play and in tournaments and such. But sorry to disappoint you. Um, as of right now, I, I, is there still a chance that there there could be something worthwhile in there? Yeah, but very unlikely. I am really sorry. Does that mean that this is not a good book? No, it does not mean that. Because all the White Dwarfs, since they started reformatting this to be in just a plethora of information and minus all the ads, adverts, everything that they used to cram into this. So it was basically just a walk-in advertisement with a little bit of information, a little bit of, of uh, content. Now it's just content, and which is great. Because uh, I, I don't think... There's some that have not been a greatly appealing to me, but at the very least, the painting articles have. Because even if I don't want to do Dark Angels... I might see, like, scrolling back up here, like, I like how they do this red, or maybe this uh, black casing, or their, the metal, or the green, whatever, even this um, kind of brass, because I'm always trying to find a new way to do brass, I like brass fittings on, like, the Imperial Knights and other large vehicles and stuff, so there's always still something in here that you could learn from, and... 
There's some cool stories in there. You, now they've been putting about three or four stories, so it's still good to get. Uh, I just, and I, it's not, I don't, I don't take, I, I should really say, guys and gals, I don't take any delight in ruining somebody's day. And I, I, I'm smiling and kind of laughing. It's uncomfortable, and I feel a little, a little upset that, uh, Dark Angels didn't get anything amazing in here. Now, I know a Games Workshop, I know their mentality, and I know their company line and all that stuff that they'll feed you. Like, well, no, this is a great opportunity. This is a fantastic uh, magazine full of content, and there's a lot of value in the article about the Dark Angels. You'll get a lot of lore in there, some great painting articles, some, demonst or some fantastic examples of how to paint your uh, Dark Angel Primaris models that are all coming out. And we've included a fantastic short story and a mission that really gets into the narrative of the Dark Angels. Something along that lines. Though, no, that was not me trying to do a British voice. That was just me trying to sound a little hoity-toity. You know, they're, they're not wrong. But when right now, there's such a fever pitch for... Uh, for uh, competitive rules that to toy with everybody with this, especially right now, Games Workshop, right now when you just announced uh, a month ago that there's seven new codex supplements coming and to go along with the codex that's out right now, that you've only put two of those seven out. And here we are uh, pretty much almost a what, three weeks later? And we don't have a new book. We don't even have anything cited. The only thing we know is that they're coming. That there's a Raven Guard model, a Chapter Master. If you did not see the the Nova Open uh, leaked, ladies and gents, Chapter Master, uh, newly promoted Captain Shrike. I'm not going to try to say his first name. Um, he's now been Primarist. He's gone through the Rubicon. He's now uh, Primarist. He's got a nice snazzy haircut. A little emo from uh, what, in my opinion. But he is decked out looking awesome. We know that there's going to be a Forge Father, which is, I think, officially is the first, this guy's going to be the first named character that the Iron Hands have ever had. I cannot think that, I mean, in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, I don't think they've ever had a named character. I'm going to have to go back and look, but I don't think they have. So I'm pretty sure he's going to be a named character and whenever the Iron Hands books drops. So we know these things are coming, but they're just like, hey, here's a bunch of other stuff. And I understand they're kind of like wanting to give the Space Marine players a little bit of breathing room before they drop more stuff. But you know what? They should have dropped the Impulsor, the Infiltrators, the Suppressors, the Eliminators at launch or the following week or maybe they made it a, like a three-week um, launch. They should have done that because people want their models. And their people are going to be ravenous when that hits. But... I understand from a business standpoint, get stretch it out, kind of, you know, these intervening weeks, give a little bit to everybody else. War Cry, we got you. Age of Sigmar, Gotrex, and, uh, Gotrex Gunnarsson models coming. We like you. Um, hey, Aeronautic Imperialis and all this other stuff to kind of um, wet the whistle of everybody else to let Games Workshop um, customers know that we haven't forgot about them. However, give us some more information um, and I understand I'm a little biased. I'm a Space Marine player. I like Space Marines. I want my stuff. I want my goods. But it's I, I didn't like how they did this release. I didn't expect them to go, bam, here's your seven, well, I guess eight books, including the Codex, and eight sets of data cards, uh, eight characters, like five or six box sets. Bam. Now you're overloaded. I get it. They got to stretch it out. But come on, let's pick up the tempo, guys. Let's pick it up. Uh, so a couple of things I'm going to talk about. Um, let me keep on the Dark Angels. Let me check chat real quick to see if anybody jumped on and said anything. No, nobody's saying anything. That is okay. Um, usually I've noticed that uh, whenever I do these Twitch videos, which is our new channel uh, that we're streaming on, and then I transfer it over to our YouTube channel, then people start chatting with us, and I'm like, I could be chatting with you guys live and chatting and talking about all this stuff. Anyways, I don't mind going back and chatting with you guys. Um, I'm actually looking at setting up a Twitter account uh, so we can actually um, 
do some name dropping or not name dropping, but it might be better than doing these videos, waiting to render them and then load them up onto YouTube or, to, you know, do this pop video going, hey, guys, uh, we're doing a quick show. You know, I might be able to go, hey, here's Twitter. Here's Instagram. Well, we have an Instagram, but maybe do Instagram and Twitter and go, bam, guys, here's some leaks right away. We're going to talk about this on our next show, but I wanted to get these out to you guys first. Um, that way we can stop getting um, scooped on this. So, because we can't do these shows because of all of our jobs. We can't do these shows um, three or four times a day like a lot of these uh, YouTube and Twitch guys do. That is until we get to the sponsor part. And that's why we, you know, we need your guys' help. So always having like three or four people on at a time watching our videos is great. So I wanted to bring up something, uh, my favorite hateful rumor, and I hate it. So I've been talking about this for months and I've been trying to squash it. And maybe because I've been bringing it up, other people have latched onto it. And now it's getting out of control. So Imperial or the Imperium versus Dark Angels or Dark Angels versus Imperium. I'm still saying absolutely no, it is not happening. That was a dumb rumor. I know where it came from and it's not, there's no credibility to it, guys and gals. It's, but I always say it's not impossible. It's just highly, highly improbable. So by that, I mean, could Games Workshop turn around and do it? Yes, they could. Are they likely going to do that? No. I, and I'm, be, I'm, I'm being generous by saying there's a 1% chance. That's very generous. Because I don't want to sit there and actually calculate how low below or how, how much below 1% that box set is going to be. Now, one that I would say has maybe a 5% chance, maybe a generous 10% chance is the flip side which I've said before makes a lot more sense. Dark Angels versus the Fallen. I see that as a possibility. I even see it as a possibility, say next year, Games Workshop is like, you know what? We need to go ahead and put out a new box set with uh, all the rules updated and to one book. And just like the Dark Imperium set, let's do Dark Angels versus Fallen. That'll be an amazing set. Two power armor sets, very even. Um, evenly based. Let's do it. We'll put a new a cipher. We'll put cipher in there, and we'll add you know, Captain Planet, whatever you know. Put him in there for the Dark Angels. Call it a day. Now, that is, I would say, that's a higher possibility, but uh, still unlikely. Still unlikely. Now, the reason why I bring this up is not because I love to talk about this damn rumor it's because it has now popped up on bell of lost souls and spiky bits they're both now reporting about this and at least at the very least i believe it's spiky bits um they're saying this is a heavy salt rumor guys and gals uh this and they're even like i think they even quoted bell of lost souls so where bell of lost souls got it maybe me because uh, I'm pretty sure as I've been going through a lot of the YouTube and Twitch channel and videos and stuff, I think I'm the only one that keeps bringing it up. So, you know, you're welcome, Bell of Lost Souls, for, for that uh, clickbait article. Now, the reason why that's a concern is because now this is going to probably spread like wildfire. And in a way, it's probably... I'll, I'll take some... Uh, some uh, responsibility for this because I complained about it week after week or every few weeks um, but you know from wherever the original source you know if they spread how they spread it around how uh, Bell of Lost Souls and Spiky Bits are now running with it this thing's about ready to get out of control so be prepared just because these people are reporting these two websites uh, companies news sites whatever clickbait sites are reporting on this they're still calling it rumors thank god and they're by them keeping it as a rumor um 
it, it's not going to matter. People are going to run with it, and they're going to be like Imperial versus Dark Angel, or Dark Angels versus Imperium, or Dark Angels versus Fallen, which is the one I lean towards. Um, if anything, they're going to run with it, and now it's going to pop up. Watch the YouTube videos, especially coming out of the UK. There's about three or four sites. I don't want to call the guys out. I'll let you. Um, if you watch for those videos, you're going to see them. I'm sorry. Uh, and I'm not saying it's my fault. And I'm not you know, trying to say, oh, you know, I'm the font of all these crazy rumors because I'm not. Um, I just report on them. But I'm just sorry that you're going to have to deal with it now. And I'm really sorry that I'm going to have to deal with the, the constant. Uh, some people are going to be making fun of me about this one. <laughs> so I'm not happy about that. Um, so... That's coming down the line. Expect that to blow up. And then you, when you have this article in White Dwarf with all these rules that are not match play and the pictures and all this stuff, uh, it's just going to create this explosion of content, uh, rumor mongering, everything. People are going to be just getting crazy with this. Lionel Johnson is going to drop next month. That's a spec, not a spec. That's not a speculation. I'm just joking about that, guys. Lionel Johnson's not dropping next month. I mean, 1% chance. Generous 1% chance he could drop next month. But I'm telling you, I shouldn't even said that. Because somebody's like, oh, Lionel Johnson's, Johnson, Lionel Johnson's coming out next month. And there's going to be a new Primaris Azrael. And uh, the, cha the company master for the Raven Wings getting a new model. He's going to have his decked out Primaris Land Speeder. It's the first of a new kind. And it's going to be it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. The pictures are in the White Dwarf and September White Dwarf. John said all that. I didn't say that. Well, I just did. But I'm joking. And somebody's going to run with that. And I'm, it's going to suck. I shouldn't even have joked about that. All right. So let me continue on because uh, time is ticking away. And I've got... TV shows to watch. <laughs> um, so this popped up today. Well, not this particular image. This popped up uh, months ago. I think it was at, not Adepticon, but um, oh goodness, I can't remember. Maybe Gen, uh, before Gen Con. Maybe at Gen Con. I think it was at Gen Con. Uh, this is season three of Warhammer Underworlds. So yay! But boo because uh, Shadespire, the original, um, season one, has been discontinued. And I'm air quotes if you're listening but not watching. Quote, discontinued. Go into their website. You'll see that um, all the Shadespire teams, and uh, that's the first season, the Shadespire box, the cards, everything else has been moved to a, um, let's see here, no longer available, more than likely, it means they're going to move to direct because you can still use those war bands in um, Warhammer Underworlds. However, they are not going to be in stores any longer. They're not going to be part of the regular line, which is not not necessarily surprising. So it doesn't mean that Underworlds is going away because Underworlds is a fantastic uh, game. It's for especially for competitive play. If you like to compete, you like tournament play. This game gets fast, like ridiculously fast. I've seen games in 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes at most. Um, and you're, I mean, in an hour, you're getting about three matches, maybe an hour and a half if you got a slow player. I mean, really freaking fast, very competitive. And it's a combination of a regular miniatures game and um, having cards available to activate special abilities. Now, the reason why this is not going to go away is this is their one of their best ways to introduce new armies so beast grave is the next or season three of warhammer underworlds that's coming out my guess end of september beginning of october time frame and what is going to be cool about this is we're going to see what has happened to the wood elves not the sylvaneth uh, army that's already out the sylvaneth are like the tree folk um like uh, not not like tree beard, but very similar. They have um, I, I forget what they're called, but they're very awesome looking tree lord guys. Um, and then they've got all sorts of like dryads and something in between. Some big beetle chick uh, goddess that's riding just giant uh, beetle. 
a rhinoceros type beetle. I can't remember her name, like Ariel, something like that. Uh, but they're, they're, they're not wood elves. They used to be part of the wood elves back in the earlier edition, but now they're not. So in this box set is Beastmen, and I don't know what the new terminology is, uh, so forgive me for that. I'll leave that for Ski. But you're going to have Beastmen versus the Wood Elves. So you got a centaur dude. you got these elves in the background that um, with bows that, that are very, very, very typical of the Wood Elves. Um, they were well known for their archers. Um, they had, used to have this basically these, uh, I think they were way watchers. They were basically snipers with bows doing a hell of a lot of damage. They had war dancers. So it's going to be interesting to see if war dancers come back. And this new unit... Um, and I've seen the miniature for it. You might have seen it too. Is this centaur? Um, it's they might be like the wild riders of Coronos, Coronos, Coronos. Um, they, that was an older unit that was very, very scary, very powerful. And then beastmen, lots and lots of beastmen. It'd be a bunch of new sculpts for both sets, so you don't have to worry about repeats for these beastmen. You might actually want to add them to your beastmen Age of Sigmar army. So this is coming down the line, but Underworlds is not going away. It's just Shadespire Season 1 is, is now currently no longer available. And my guess is that is un, they, they put that on there. It's like a quick stamp until they can do all the paperwork and the digital uh, doodads and put some new stamps on it that say this is now direct sales only. So you won't be seeing those in shell on sh um ordered in stores anymore uh, to, or to be on shelf and not part of the regular line. That doesn't mean that your stores can't get them. It just, you're probably going to have to special order them. Like at Atomic Hobby Shop, you're going to have to special order. So like I said, not going away. It's um, Beast Grave is about ready to drop. So uh, coming up, and I'm going to try to pull up a video here, not video, but another picture because I'm getting close on my time. Um, oh, they're just called Treeman. Um, yeah, Sylvaneth. Thanks, uh, Krom. I really appreciate that. So I'm, I'm putting up some prices here. Uh, this is the stuff that's going to go on pre-order this coming Saturday. This Saturday's release is all that amazing Aeronautica Imperialis um, stuff, which I'm going to scroll back up and show you something that accidentally got leaked um, that we know that now that's coming, which is really cool. I was just talking about this to Krom the other day. Um, so... Gotrex Gernison, Gernison um, is coming. This guy is probably going to fly off the shelf for a lot of Age of Sigmar players and hobbyists. I'm going to show you the guys the model here shortly. This is going to be amazing. It'd be great. It'd be great. And I'm going to really, really stress this. Go on to Twitter, um, their Facebook page, and blast the Man at Arms or the Men at Arms uh, people that do that make the recreations for model or weapons. Go on there, tell them that you want to see Gotrex uh, Axe being remade. Let's blast them, guys and gals. Let's blast them with so many messages that we want to see Gotrex Axe, the Men at Arms. Google it, Men at Arms, um, YouTube. You'll be able to watch that show. They do some amazing things. They did the war, um, the, the Gal Maraz, the Hammer of Sigmar. Um, I think they did the Slayer of Kings. And they did another, oh, they did the working chain sword. That's right. They did a working chain sword, among many other weapons. So let's actually, we're going to start a campaign. I'm going to get the details up on the next video when I'm doing a painting video tomorrow. And we're going to just, and I'm going to put that up on the Facebook page. When we get the Twitter and Instagram, we are going to blast them. Let's get a Gotrex axe made. Let's do this. Anyways, so a bunch of stuff coming out. Iron Golem, I don't even know what that is. Untamed Beasts. Looking at these prices, it's really weird. I understand Defiled Runes is the next uh, box set. Cool. That's going to be a bunch of terrain. Um, Chimera is an older model, so nothing new there. Untamed Beast. Oh, duh. Okay. Uh, Chimera is the, the creature. This These two boxes, Untamed Beasts and Iron Golems, are the two war cry war bands that are in the main box set they are now going to be available for um if you just want those and didn't want to buy the box set well played games workshop well played and the chaotic beasts those are all the creatures in there uh that and this is perfect timing with the monsters and mercenaries book well played games workshop 
well played. Uh, before I go to the Gotrex coming out, um, let's take a look here. Chrom, you might be excited about this. So right now with the box set and the release coming this weekend, Orcs are getting the Daka Jets and the Fida Bombers. Fida Bombers. Fight, and I'm not trying to be all street. They're called Fida Bombers. Um, those are coming this week. A accidental leak online uh, was the Orc Evi Bombers. These are not the these. When you guys get a chance to look at the Fida Bombers uh, picture or art uh, or box art, you're going to see these are distinctively different from the Evi Bombers. These are the super heavy bombers. So these are coming. Um, so imagine Krom is going to be kind of happy about that. He is a master orc player. So I just wanted you guys to see that. I thought that was really cool that um, that, act, that was accidentally sh uh, leaked. But it's out there in internet land. So nobody can get in trouble for revealing it. So heavy bombers are right around the corner. So that's good that they're showing, you know, that they're trying to expand the line. So we're happy about that. So let's go into this last little bit. Let me check my notes here. Okay, so we're doing good. All right, so let's look at this amazing monstrosity that is Gotrex, uh, Gernison, 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 I don't even know how to say his gosh darn name, but he is an amazing model. Look at this bad boy. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, he there's um, I want to say about nine novels out there. They're all Slayer. Um, they all have Slayer in the name, so like Troll Slayer, Skaven Slayer, Demon Slayer, God Slayer, Realm Slayer is the newest one, and it's following this dwarf who is pretty much cursed. Um, uh, I mean, as a Slayer, you know, their whole purpose is to go out and redeem themselves in the eyes of their people and the gods. By, by dying in battle against this, some monstrous creature. Well, Gotrex and his other companion, Felix, who is not in this, um, is at least doesn't look like he's going to be coming back around. Uh, many, many adventures, and this guy has gone up against... Um, I, would, I wish I could say he Mary Sues his way through um, some of the most incredible creatures that he has no right to survive against. But as you read these books, and especially the ones by William King, Gotrex, he earns those uh, those titles of Dragon Slayer, uh, Skaven Slayer, whatever, because uh, he barely survives, and it's not like an easy day. In the beginning, man, it's it, okay. It was a little easy to kill some Skaven or kill, you know, orcs or whatever, uh, because those are easy, like these Skavens at his feet right here. But as it gets, as the story progresses and you get more and more carries, uh, uh, characters in the story, it starts getting a lot harder. And there's several times you're like, oh, God, I, 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 how did he survive that? You know, and he's practically butchered, um, and, and but he survives. And it's because he's essentially cursed. Um, I think it's, I can't remember, don't quote me, but I believe it's because his original axe, um, I, would, I would almost say that that axe, was making him superhuman, and but and even though it was pretty much like a near artifact god level type of axe, the fact that he had it made him invincible. So it was not invincible, but near uh, invincible, and it was preventing him from uh, getting that honorable death, fulfilling his oath as a slayer. So it was really you see his depression and how demoralizing it is that he can't fulfill his oath. Uh, so it's really cool to see also him move from, I mean, he, we haven't seen him since the end times in Warhammer Fantasy before they moved over to Age of Sigmar and, and restarted the universe in a very, very awesome way. So he is now available at, or will be in about two weeks. So really cool. Um, he's got I mean, that looks like a shoulder pad from a, uh, what do they call him? Stormcast Eternal. He's decked out. Um, he's got a lot of dead bodies. He's got a brand new axe. I'm sure that axe is, oh, he's got a legendary Fire Slayer axe, Zangrom Thraz, uh, which he's deadlier than ever. 
so that's interesting that that axe makes it is more powerful than the previous axe so he is coming very very soon um in about two weeks and they've got a new book with them okay so we have realm slayer that was an audio drama or audio book only it's now coming final thank god thank you lord it is now coming as a novel a paperback novel and what is this ghoul slayer the next book fantastic so really badass i'm really excited about that i wanted to tell you guys about that so i'm going to go ahead and keep this picture up get rid of this get rid of leaks check chat real quick okay we're doing good uh checking on my time how long have i been on okay we're about ready to wrap this up wow all right so what else do i have to talk about well actually i'm not even gonna keep this up let's go ahead and go back to those real quick this is gonna be the last thing before we sign off um we've already talked about a number of things like the I'd say the most important thing, at least coming up in October, is the Spirit Decor uh, Decor um, GT that's happening at Atomic Hobby Shop. We're coming up on the halfway point of having people signed up for it. Um, that's 28 spots. Uh, the top prize is an LVO championship ticket and three-day pass to LVO. So make sure you did that. Gave you some disappointing news about the dark angels which i'm really really sorry for i, I know i'm smiling starting to laugh um I, I, i'm sorry guys dark angel players i'm really really sorry it i knew i'm laughing because there's a lot of people that got really overzealous and we're already starting to report like this is it lionel johnson and we're gonna get all these great upgrades not taking the time to think about the timing of this that there's not that for them to do something like this would have to be a dark angels codex would have to be released and the timing is just way off guys and gals so the wild speculation that this is going to be it the dark angels are going to rise to glory and i'm sorry it's just funny to see how rumors and speculation get out of control when people don't take time to analyze what games workshop does and analyze the likelihood of a sneak peek of what's coming they stop doing that these are now just content books and they're not going to do a dark angels or a blood angels update in the white dwarf like that those are going to be probably speculation here probably very accurate they're probably not going to get their own codex ladies and gents they're probably going to be a codex supplement this is speculation but i have a feeling based on what we're seeing they are going to get a, a codex supplement and it's probably going to be 30 dollars, just like the others but there's just going to be more a bunch of content in it just like the ultramarine one that's my guess it's a speculation i have a, just a gut feeling uh, but i'll keep you apprised anyways let's get on with this um i talked about shadespire I talked about being discontinued and it's the first season, not the whole thing. We talked about uh, Dark Angels versus Imperium, not going to happen. And Dark Angels versus Fallen, maybe, I'm going to say like 5%. Um, if you are a fan of Bell of Lost Souls or Spiky Bits, as, you know, I'm okay with Spiky Bits. Bell of Lost Souls has a little bit of a clicky bait thing. Um, but both those places are now reporting on that rumor right there dark angels versus imperium or dark angels versus fallen so now you guys can see my frustration that this rumor had no root in um uh well logic or truth and it was just pure rumor speculating and almost like somebody's like you know what i'm gonna toss a rumor grenade and watch it blow up and see how many casualties we can cause i'm not advocating for people to toss grenades not whatsoever. I'm not talking about real violence. I'm talking about uh, just a little bit of a whisper of like, hey, Dark Angels are uh, Dark Angels are going to get uh, a new box set versus Imperium. I saw it, and now all of a sudden everybody's going to talk about it. Watch the next few days. I'm telling you, YouTube, Twitch is going to be blowing up about it. Just watch it. All right. So what do I want to end the show on? Let's see here. Well, we're going to talk just very quickly. 
Did drop pods get nerfed? Let's talk about drop pods. Right here, right in the beginning. People are like, oh my gosh, drop pods got nerfed. No, they didn't. Drop pods got a boost. They can now come in turn one. They can now come in turn one, starting turn one. You don't have to split it in half. You can just arrive turn one. Now, what this is, this is a Warhammer 40,000 errata for the Codex Space Marines. Errata. Google errata. Check out the definition for errata. It's basically, there is an error in the print or the writing. And the errata is used to clarify or to correct a mistake that appeared in the book. So, is this a nerf? No. This is not a nerf. And what am I talking about? In the codex, if you have a physical copy of the codex, not the digital, because I think the digital, if you have a bona fide digital EPUB that you got from Games Workshop or Black Library, it's automatically updating. If you've got a burnt copy um, or a, a cracked copy, whatever, then it's probably not gonna be updated. So you're gonna want this. Now, what it got changed from the book release to, to this errata is that if they don't come in by the end of the third battle round, they count as having been destroyed. Uh, in the book, it doesn't say that. It doesn't have that line in there. Um, my book's over there. I'm not even going to get it. They put it right there in the errata for this as a clarification. Like, whoops, we forgot to, to correct this. This was an error in printing, so we are clarifying with the errata what we actually had in there. So basically, uh, this is not a nerf. This is, you are still coming in on turn one, not on turn uh, on turn four, five, or six. So congrats, guys, that are using drop pods. You get to come in turn one. You didn't get nerfed. All they did is go back and go, you know what? We screwed up. We have to clarify now. And that's what an errata is. We had an error in printing, uh, not like, and it wasn't, if it was a nerf, I could see them going, you know what? We need to just go ahead and this is way too powerful. You know, way too many events have happened. We've had way too many complaints. We need to go ahead and fix that. So let's go ahead and throw this in there that they can no longer do it. That would be in an FAQ or in the chapter proof that's coming up. But this is an errata. This is a clarification of an error that they had at printing. So sorry, guys. Uh, not a nerf, just a clarification, cleaning up an error in printing. So the other thing is, does adding the, basically the assassin model to any army with the operative requisition sanction stratagem prevent the rest of my army from using combat doctrines? Yes. Note that this model remains part of your army, even if it is destroyed. So what does this mean? If you have, say, just a battalion, you are rocking one battalion of, of Codex Space Marines, you get those special new doctrines, the Devastator, Tactical, and Assault Doctrines, and any of the shenanigans you can do there, especially if you're an Ultramarine. Now, if you include, if you spend the, uh, I think it's two command points for this stratagem, the Operative Requisition Sanctioned Stratagem, you can now bring in, you have basically you can spend 85 points, and it's part of your army list, and from game to game, you can bring in a different type of an assassin, which is really cool. However, if you do that, since he is now, he or she is now a part of that, um, that detachment that disrupts having those combat doctrines. Now, how an independent operative, which is one of their special rules, can disrupt these you know, 100 year old or the how they could disrupt um, the combat doctrines. I don't know. I think it's a an adjustment to kind of balance out how this uh, how this apply or how you use the combat doctrines. Maybe it's just a way for them to. I don't know. I There's there's probably lots of explanations. I'm not it's not a big deal, but I get it. People are, are upset. So you know what? If you're upset, then just what spend uh, one command point and bring an auxiliary detachment with him, 
well, congr- if that's how that works, which I'm pretty sure it is, if you bring an auxiliary detachment, I think you can just bring another model. Well, great, bring another model. I know it's not as flexible, but bring just take that and you know put your assassin in there you, to put your. Um, I think the most likely one is the Vindicare, the sniper, and now you've just spent one command point instead of two, or you're losing one command point instead of two. And now you got your sniper. Now you have to tweak your list a little bit, but oh no. Um, so that that sucks, but I get it, guys. And the other thing, I'm not going to dig through this. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. I don't have to dig too hard. This right here is because I started making new lists with Thunderfire Cannons because one of the difficulties I had as a player um, competitively which we all know that I'm not that great competitively, is the Thunderfire, or not having the ability to reach out and touch those units that are hiding. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and put the Thunderfire Cannon in because I need to uh, be able to reach out and touch somebody. <laughs> not, not bad touch. Well, I guess it's bad touch when you're raining a whole bunch of um, ordnance on somebody. So yes, reach out and bad touch a, a, a unit not somebody's unit. I'm just gonna stop because this is gonna get really weird. So the uh, Tech Marine now, the Tech Marine Gunner, uh, if you've seen the model and he looked at his war gear and everything, he's got the servo harness, so it's got like a plasma cutter, it's got a flamethrower, he's got his bolter, I think he's got a power axe, uh, grenades, the whole works. And before, he wasn't able to, it was either fire his weapons or fire the uh, Thunderfire cannon. Now, you get to do both. Now, the Thunderfire, the Tech Marine's got to stay close to it still, can't go wandering about, but there's been several several incidents where that uh, you, because you can bury that unit, um, hide him, put him in a magic bunker, which is basically an enclosed building, or hide him because you don't need to see, your, you don't need line of sight to shoot at a target because you're just lobbing shells. But then bad guys pop up, especially Gene Steeler cults. Well, I can't fire the Thunderfire Cannon because now i got to defend it with my Tech Marine, but I need to fire my Thunderfire Cannon. Now you can do both. So that's that's a that's a bonus. It's a little bonus, but it's a nice bonus. I'm actually digging it, especially as I'm going to be using Thunderfire Cannons. I have not... I don't think I've ever used Thunderfire Cannons before, but I'm excited about it. I'm excited about this. So uh, you guys really do need to take a look at everything that is going on um, in the publication, whether you're playing against Space Marines or your Space Marine players. There's lots of little cool rules in there. Another one that uh, we were speculating on, and I'm very glad that Games Workshop, well, not glad, but I'm, gl- I'm not glad because it sucks because I was thinking about this was an amazing rule um, loophole, but um, I'm thankful that they clarified it. So now we don't have to worry about debating it. This one is, uh, if I upgrade my captain in Phobos armor to be a chapter master, which I think is like one command point or maybe two command point stratagem, um, should the infiltrator comms array still work with this model? The infiltrators have this um, 10 point upgrade they can get that no matter where they are on their battlefield, no matter where the captain in Phobos armor or the lieutenant in Phobos armor are, that squad with the comms array can still benefit from their uh, reroll ones to hit and reroll wounds uh, ones to wound. Uh, the chapter master lets you reroll all hits, possibly all wounds. I think it's just all hits or all failed hits, which is really really a nice ability for one or two command points. Um, so the question is, does that chapter master ability work with the infiltrator comms array? Um, with its chapter master ability instead of the rights of battle, which is that reroll ones to hit. Um, so the answer is no, which makes n- not a lot of sense. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't understand. Um, I really, but you know what? I'm going to roll with it. It doesn't really hurt me. I don't take that chapter master ability. Uh, I, I, I use my command points for a lot of other things. So it doesn't hurt me, but I understand and I'm glad they clarified that. That really saves some time. Uh, another thing is the new Impulsor unit that we're still waiting for Games Workshop to release, which is probably going to be late September, early October, um, which is about the same time and mark on your calendar that we're going to see and hear about uh, more about Psychic Awakening. Anyways, uh, units that disembark, um, that sorry, uh, if an Impulsor unit moves, 
and a unit embarked upon it disembarks, which they can because it's an assault it has the assault vehicle ability. Can that disembarking unit move? Yes, they can still do their normal movement. That's really cool. The suck part is that you can't sprint up there with your impulsor, turn around and or right there, disembark and still charge, which is really weird because that's what that assault vehicle ability used to be is that, and that was that whole Rhino, not Rhino Rush, but Land Raider Rush and a couple other vehicles. You'd sprint up there as fast as you could and you got all these Terminators or Assault Marines um, or characters, all this goodness inside of it. And they got these, uh, basically these disembarkation ramps that um, that are designed for, as you roll up, they just drop out. You don't have to step out or claw, uh, climb out or open doors or anything. They just pop open and you come charging down the ramp right into close combat. That's what they should have kept this as. This was a missed opportunity, but it's understandable. But it's still a missed opportunity because, and I don't know, they, they should have allowed that because you can't put in, uh, which I understand it would have been kind of devastating, which still doesn't make sense to me, but you can't put in anybody with Gravis armor or Mark 10 armor. So you don't have to worry about a Gravis captain with his seven wounds now, or the, um, uh, what are those guys called? The aggressors. Uh, come through about three aggressors, which should be what can fit in there. You don't have to worry about them coming out. This is It's really weird that they did this because you can put six models in it, six Primaris models, which are on a 32 millimeter base, right? And you can put character models in there, which are on a 40 millimeter base, okay? In the past, if you had models that were big models like Terminators or aggressors, those models counted as two versus one. And then they you kind of take care of that. Is it says six models, well, then now I can put three big models in there. I, I'm, I'm a little upset by this. So sorry about the pause there. I'm just a little upset that I can't put those models in there. Um, there's no reason not to. Because if I can put a, a 40 millimeter uh, base model in there, regular character, why can't I put the Gravis armor in there? I mean, it's an open top vehicle. It, it's, it looks like a kind of like a, um, it's like the, not a Winnebago, um, in, not an Impala. Is the Impala? No. Man, I can't remember. El Camino of the Repulsors. It, it sucks that I can't put um, those guys in there, but whatever. Anyways, they should still have that assault vehicle. You should still, that ramp, or you know, jumping over the sides and still charge. I don't know if orcs can do that with their open ve top vehicles, but this should be allowed. I'm not going to keep ranting on it because I've already ran over more time than I wanted. So, anyways, guys and gals, this is it. We covered a lot of um, news, rumors, uh, and talked about the upcoming GT at the Atomic Hobby Shop, 28 man GT, 1750. Uh, five special missions to really challenge you, if, especially if you want to win that Las Vegas Open 40K championship ticket and three-day pass. Um, and I was going to talk to you guys about leaks, and I kept watching for dings, no dings. So, no, um, you know what? Let me make sure that you guys can't see the special window here. Let me check my email. See if maybe, just maybe, make sure you guys aren't seeing that email. Good, you're not. No, nothing. No email from my source. God dang it, that really makes me mad. <laughs> uh, not does not make me mad. I, I, I was just really hoping that I would have had that little leak information. So um, be very cautious. One of my last things to say here before I hit the uh, uh, done uh, streaming button here and sign off. Well, actually, two things. Make sure you hit the follow button. Uh, please, please, please hit the follow button if you have not already. Pass the word on to your friends and family, uh, maybe even your Facebook page, so they can come on, watch the show. Tomorrow, I'm going to be doing a show probably at about, I'm pro I think I'm going to be doing it at 7 o'clock. I've been changing my um, schedule at work, so I think about 7, I'm going to do a painting show tomorrow, and hopefully I'll have some leaks tomorrow. What am I going to be working on? Well, I think, don't quote me, don't quote me. I'm trying to find the model here. Um, not safe for work. Yeah, definitely not safe for work. So I'll show, man, I will show you if it's not safe for work or kids. Let's say that. So um, shoo them away. 
let me first get rid of this window um, or shrink it down so you can see all right so I have here I'll keep it farther back so you don't see uh, some of the detail so this is the Queen of Ecstasy from uh, Creature Caster which is one of our sponsors or we're in partnership with so I think I'm gonna start with this beauty tomorrow or I have one of the original spider queens from their Kickstarter about two years ago so one of these lovely ladies and once again they are still not safe for work I might be tinkering with tomorrow or it'll be the games workshop or my uh, space Marines I think I've got uh, two different color schemes that I really like so we're gonna try that uh, one of those things I don't know what yet it'll be exciting no matter what because I'm gonna try out a bunch of techniques and we're gonna walk I'm gonna try to walk you through I am NOT a professional artist by any means but I can sit and chat and a lot of people paint better when they can sit down listen to other people talk about painting and chit chat with them so we were going to try that tomorrow see what you guys think of it and watch me make mistakes or watch how I, I, I paint maybe you can learn a few techniques um, and actually I've got a couple hot tips I'm going to pass on to you guys tomorrow so you guys should I would definitely tune in 7 p.m. Central Time. So, with that being said, I think I think we're done. Yeah, I'm well over my time. I'm so sorry. I was trying to keep this to an hour, but uh, I, I start talking about this stuff and these gosh darn stupid Dark Angels versus Imperium rumors keep popping up. And now Bell of Lost Souls and Spiky Bits are doing it. I'm very upset about that. <sighs> Saw. All right, ladies and gents, I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure you hit the follow button. Make sure that you pop it up on your Facebook, um, copy and paste, FN, or do twitch.tv slash FNP Wargamers with an S, um, or copy the link off my off our FNP Wargamers Facebook page. Have your friends and family jump on there, like us, watch our shows, 8 p.m. on Tuesday. They're going to start being, I think it's going to be 7 p.m. I'm going to say at least starting tomorrow, 7 p.m. on Wednesday and then 5 p.m. on Sunday. We are doing three shows because we are trying to get to affiliate level and uh, sponsored level. And we, we've got a bunch of hoops that we got to run through. So we're going to be doing at these shows a lot. So and tomorrow I'm going to have some news about Twitter and um, Instagram. So definitely jump on, pay attention. And I'll talk to you guys and gals later. Have a good night.